All right, so on chapter 11, just so that you guys know, again, we're only going to do those two sections. And what chapter 11 is about, okay, it's dealing with some statistics stuff, data analysis. For those of you who next year plan on going into college algebra and then province stats, you'll see more of this in your province stats courses, which for college-wise, most... Uh, most uh, Programs or whatever, most degrees, have some kind of statistics course that you have to take. So just so that you guys know, this is, this will, you'll see this again in your future. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to talk about on 11.1 is normal distribution. Means <clears throat> when your data is, is all put together, the normal distribution curve looks like something like this. Okay, so you've got that, well, that's pretty straight. you got that... <laughs> line here now here's where it's going to be really bad okay a normal distribution curve looks like your data looks like a hill it's not bad usually I went slow normally it's really worse than that okay um, but anyway really worse yeah. okay so for something like a normal distribution curve it's going to look like this where your data is generally going to be in the middle rather than on the one side or the other. Right in the middle is going to be, bless you, right in the middle is your mean or your average. Okay? A lot of times they use this symbol here. It's mu is what it is, but that's like your mean okay? or your middle. Okay? Then the next type of verbiage that you'll hear me use is you will hear me use standard deviation. Okay, so if you hear me use the word standard deviation or one deviation or two deviations, we're just referring to how far over from that middle we are. Okay, so for instance, if I go one standard deviation over, the symbols look like this. It's got mu plus, and then it looks like an O kind of. Okay, that symbol that looks like an O kind of is the shorthand version of me writing standard deviation. Okay, what, Tamara? Is that line also used in part of the, the Huh? No. <laughs> Did you just say antil? Yeah, she called it antil. Okay. Will it be like always a part of it? Like it will always on the end? Right. Because I'm getting, we have more to fill in here. And then I also have this side over here that would be one standard deviation to the left of it, so that's minus that. Okay? Now, according to some things that we have out there, the empirical rule, which it doesn't talk about that in this particular context, but this is what it means, is that 68% of all your data is going to be within one standard deviation away. So for instance, your tests yesterday that you guys took, if I were to run the statistics on it, put everybody's in there and divide by it and get the mean, and then find the standard deviation based off of that, I would find that 68% of you would be within one standard deviation of that mean. Okay, if you guys were normally distributed, which you guys are, you just don't know it, okay? So that's one standard deviation away, which means this, you guys. This is worth 34% on either side. Okay? I have 34% of the data from the middle to the standard deviation, either to the right or to the left, for a total of 68. 34 plus 34 is 68. Okay? <clears throat> now, the next one. This would be two standard deviations away. So how it would be written is mu plus two of those curly Q things. Or mu minus two of those curly Q looking things. On this side of it, what it's saying is, is that if I'm two standard deviations away, now I'm covering 95% of all people, which means that you have some people that could be scored really high and some people that could score really low. 
but 95% of you would be between those two pieces. That's covering the majority of people, obviously. Now, for this particular problem, or that particular thing, this is worth 13.5%. Okay, now 13.5% with that part plus the 34%, 34% and 13.5% would equal 95%. Okay, that's what's happening. These things also are what we call, do you remember the word symmetrical? Right, yep. symmetry? Yep. Okay, meaning that what I do to the left, I have to do the right and so on. Okay, now comes the next tail. Mu plus three standard deviations away. Mu minus three standard deviations away. <clears throat> when you are three standard deviations away from the, the middle on both sides, you are covering 99.7% of all the data. So is that, the, is that a lot of it? Yes, it's almost all of it. So for this particular thing, this will cover 2.35%. 2.35%. And then the last part is what's ever left over. And that's 0.15%. 0.15%. Okay? That's that 0.3%. So, for instance, just to kind of give you an example, have you ever heard of, or some of those people that are supposed to be like, their intelligence level is off the charts, really high? Yeah. Okay, you've heard of the, like the IQ test, they're like way above it. When you actually do, if I were to have an IQ test, or every single one of you do an IQ test, we would be within two standard deviations away from the middle, is what we would probably be in order to cover most everybody in this room. But there are certain individuals that would be on that very far end of the scale, meaning they're off the charts. Like they, it's almost impossible to get that high. Okay, there are some people in the world like that. Is there very many? No. There's 0.15 percent of the people in the world that are like that. Okay. So when you think of it that way, it's really, really small. What you're going to do with this information is they're going to ask you. What's the probability of you landing in this zone? Well, the probability, you guys, is the percentages. So if I say from the mean to the standard deviation to the, on the right, that would be 34% of it, or 0.34. So what you're going to do for this, you guys, is you're just going to use those numbers to answer your questions. Okay? So here's what it's going to ask you to do. It's going to say something like this. P, x is less than or equal to mu minus standard deviation. <clears throat> it's supposed to be what? It's not an M. It's mu. No, it's a U with a with a front stick. Okay, so here's how you answer this question. So if I draw the normal distribution curve, -wee, making some straight lines today. Well, that's kind of not, but we're close enough. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the standard deviation, or I'm going to put the average right in the middle. Where is mu minus standard deviation? Is that to the left or to the right? The left. The left, right here. This is the line that we're looking at for this problem. Now, is it asking you to find out how much is to the right or to the left of it? To the left of it, because it says less than, right? So we are trying to figure out what is this answer? What's the probability of finding this? So like me having a, let's say I had a dartboard back there by Owen. It'd be like me throwing a dart and hitting the 20. 
or the bullseye? What's the probability of getting it in that zone? So here's how I do this. 50% of your data, or 0.5, is from the middle to the left, right? And 50% of it would be to the right. So like if I cut you guys down the middle, half of the class is over here and half the class is over there. Same concept. What was the number that belonged right here? 34. That was 0.34. Okay, 34% is 0.34 as a decimal. So now, if I know that the entire thing is 0.5, and I know that this part that I don't need is 0.34, how would I figure out the stuff that I need to keep? Duh, subtract, right. So 0.5 minus 0.3 is how much? 0.16. Or, if you have 16%, I would give that to you. Okay? Now, what I did was I used a technique called subtraction. Instead of taking the numbers and just adding the three together. I could have done that, too. I could have taken that 13.5, that 2.5, and the 0.15, and added them and got the same answer. I just selected to subtract it instead. Okay? What about if they say the probability of x being greater than or equal to mu minus 2 standard deviations? And so first of all, here's what I want to do is I want to draw a picture because I'm a visual person. Here's my mu right in the middle. Where's negative 2 at? To the left, to the left, two spots, right? Okay. So I made two lines to the left of the middle. So now which way am I asking for? To the right of it or to the left of it? When I say greater than, I want all this, right? Where am I going to stop it at? The very far right. So what I want to know is what's the probability of it landing in all this area? Okay. So what I need to know from you guys is, first of all, what's the number that, in that incorporates all of the one whole half of the side? 50%. Right? Or 0.5. <clears throat> Half of it should be 50%. Right? What's the number from the first to the middle? 0.34. Because you said it was 34%, didn't we? What's the number that incorporates from the second one to the next one? 13.5 or 0.135. Those numbers don't change, okay? It's the same ones over and over again. So if I want everything from this line over to here, what would I do with those numbers? Add them or subtract them? Add them. So 0.5 plus 0.34 plus 0.135 is how much? Point what? 9.75 or 97.5%. Whichever way you guys want to give that to me, I would be okay with it. Okay? So for the majority of your problems, this is what you're going to be doing. Just telling me what the percentage is. Now, the difference is going to come in this respect. Now I'm going to tell you, hey, I don't want the probability of finding it between when mu and standard deviation. Now I'm going to give you numbers instead. The 0.34, the 0.135, the point all that stuff, that doesn't change. But here's the problem going to be now. It's going to say the normal distribution has a mean of 33. 
Oh, that's horrible. So it has a mean of 33 and a standard deviation of 4. So here's what it means by that. When it says that the mean is 33 and the standard deviation is 4, what's 33 plus 4? 37. What's 33 or 37 plus 4? 41. What's 41 plus 4? Good. What's 33 minus 4? What's 29 minus 4? 25 minus 4. The only thing I did differently is I put numbers in those spots rather than the mu plus or minus the standard deviation. That's all I did. And all I did was I just kept either adding it or subtracting it. If I go to the left, I subtract the number. If I go to the right, I add the number. Now, here's what it's going to say. It's going to say between the numbers 29 to 37. So where's 29 at? 29's right here. Where's 37 at? On the other side. And it wants the probability of you hitting it in between those numbers. So you guys, what's the number for 33 to 37 is? 0.34. And what's 33 to 29? 0.34. And when I add them together, I get 0.68 or 68%. The only difference is I'm going to give you numbers rather than the letters or the symbols all the time. <clears throat> what do you think so far? Good. Really easy? Good. Okay, part two. Sometimes you'll actually need to use what we call a z-score in order to do that. And in order to find that number, okay, remember how I put a line through my z? Have I ever told you guys about that? Mm -hmm. The traumatic experience as a seventh grader? Okay. Whenever you don't have one of the numbers on the line, Okay, that's the key. When I gave you the last problem where it said 29 to 37, those two numbers were on the dots, right? This is if it didn't. Like if I said the number 28 or if I said the number 27, those weren't on that line, okay? Then I would use this in order to find out my z-score. So whatever the number is that they're looking for, you put it in for x, you put the, the mean in for the mu, and the standard deviation in the bottom. And then you use a chart. The chart is on page 598. Okay. On 598, there is a chart that you use. Okay. At the top of page 598, it talks about the standard normal table. So here's their example that they had. It said, a study finds the weights of infants at birth are normally distributed with a mean of 3,270 grams and a standard deviation of 600 grams. If an infant, infinite, if an infant is randomly chosen, what's the probability that the infant weighs 4,170 grams or less? So first of all, I take the 4,170 I subtract the average, which was 3270, and then divide it by the standard deviation of 600. So what's 4170 minus 3270 divided by 600? Huh? 1.5. Now, what I do is I use that number in order to look it up in my table. Here's how it works, okay, just to point it out to you. So the table that's on page 598, it's up here on the top, okay, or in the bottom, depending on if your number is positive or negative, that's how this one works. Same down here, it's the same table by the way. I go down to where it said 1, because Abby told me it was 1.5, so I go 1, and then over to 0.5, and what's the number? 
point nine three three two, or ninety three point three two percent. Okay. According to the table. Now, here's how this works, though. This is where you got to be careful using this table. This works from left to right. Okay. So when I say 1.5, I am over on the right, and I wanted everything less than that. Which way does less go? To the left. Okay? So it's like this for the normal distribution. 1.5 would be over here, and I wanted everything left of that. The way that that table reads is it reads everything from this way to your line. So from left to right, and that's what we needed to find. Great job. If it would have said how much, how, what's the percentage of it that would be higher than our number, then we would need this spot over here. And in order to get that, you take 1 minus whatever the number is in the chart. Why 1? Because that's 100% as, as, a, as a decimal. Okay? So that number from the chart will read from the left up to the number that was your z-score. That's how it will read. If you want to the right of that, you have to take 1 minus whatever that number is. If it is less than that, then you just, whatever that number happens to be, then you got the answer done. That's the second half of it. Okay? So if you look on page 600, <clears throat> On 3 through 6, or ones like it, it says, give the percent of the area under the normal curve represented by the shaded regions. Those percentage numbers are the numbers that I gave you. You know, those 0.34s and the 0.135s and whatnot like that. 7 through 12 is like the first ones that we did, where actually I did number 7, and then I made up another one like it. 13 to 18... I actually did number 13. Oh, by the way, what does it mean by at most? The highest it could be. What does it mean by at least? The lowest. The lowest it could be. Okay, because sometimes we forget that. And then I'll give you a word problem with that. It's the same type of thing where it'll give you the normal distribution with the mean of this and a standard deviation of that. So you might have to use the z-score stuff. Okay? Are you guys okay with it? So starting on page 600, 601, 1, Let's go 3 to 24 multiples of 3. And then 28 and 29. 